Zach Murphy here, and thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. I want to talk today and give you a message of encouragement on putting away shame and understanding what shame is according to the Word of God. And before I go any further, let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your Word and to see what your Word says, Lord. And help us to see the truth in your word, Lord, and help us to apply it, Lord, to our lives, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to help us examine our ways, Lord. Help us examine our motives, Lord, and our actions, Lord Jesus. Help us and reveal anything to us that we need to repent of, Lord Jesus, and empower us to walk righteously, to have a clean mind, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to align our desires with your desires, Lord Jesus, according to the scriptures. I pray, Lord, this message is clearly received, Lord, and you stir everybody watching, Lord, in their faith, Lord Jesus, to pursue, pursue you at greater and greater levels so that they can glorify you, Lord, in their lives, Lord, more and more every day, Lord. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So many people have the mindset of shame in their life. And even Christians themselves, they have shame over the past. Even after they get born again, they have shame over the things that they have done in the past, their mistakes, their sins, their sinful lifestyles, and even things after you were born again that you were still dealing with in your life, whether it's some addiction that you are continuing to seek the Lord on and asking him to help sanctify you and help you to walk in righteousness. Many people are dealing with, with shame, even people inside and outside the church, people who are not born again, have even more shame than believers. And when we realize the fullness of what Jesus Christ did, we need to realize that we need to put shame away because Jesus Christ paid the price for our shame. He paid the price for our sins. We need to come into agreement with all that Jesus Christ paid and provided for us as believers. It is the earnest of our inheritance as believers to walk in all that Jesus has provided for us. And I want to talk about where shame entered. And you don't have to open your Bibles too far to look into this. Go with me simply to Genesis. Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 2. We're going to verse 25, and many people are familiar with this, and I'm not going to read, you know, the whole thing here. I'm just going to pick a few things. I encourage you to go and read these whole chapters because there is just some incredible truth here. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25, after you read the account of creation, God giving Adam Eve, we see it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, were not ashamed. So the man and his wife, Adam and Eve, they walked with God in the cool of day. That is what God desired for mankind, to walk with man in the cool of day and be unashamed. Totally upfront with God, totally naked before God, it says. And you know, some people talk about in Genesis how there is a lot of allegory. Or a lot of symbolism and a lot of figure of speech in Genesis. And I agree with that to a certain extent. I'm not going to get into that for this teaching. That's a whole other teaching or series in and of itself. But know this, that God's original intent for mankind was to walk with him in total intimacy. Total intimacy. Total fellowship. Total oneness with mankind. And we see something changed here. You read in chapter 3 that mankind was tempted. Mankind was tempted. And we read that mankind fell to that temptation. What was the result of that? We read in verses 8 through 11. And they heard the voice of the Lord says, After they gave into the temptation, the eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And it wasn't that God was searching for him. God already knew everything. He knew what was going on here. He didn't have to figure it out. 
God is all knowing. And you need to realize, you know, you can try to hide whatever it is you're trying to hide, but you cannot hide it from God. You may be able to hide it from other people, but you cannot hide it before God. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? Man, Adam, the first man, Adam, he said, When he heard the voice of the Lord, he realized he was naked and he wanted to hide himself. He wanted to hide himself. He had shame here because of what he had done. Shame came from the fall. And we you read on in Genesis that the curse came upon mankind. Sin entered the seed. And everyone, when you're first born into this earth, you're born of the seed of the first man, Adam. That's why you must be born again. You don't have to teach a child to lie. It's in their nature. And, you know, there's a whole other discussion on the age of accountability and, you know, where, you know, infants and toddlers go when they pass, if they do pass. And that's very tragic when that happens. You know, I do not believe, you know, infants, you know, go to hell because they're not born again. I do believe that they do go to heaven and so forth. That's another teaching. But sin entered. The human race here in Genesis chapter 3, through the temptation, through the fall, shame entered with that. Guilt entered with that. And you know, when we talk about shame here, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have remorse for your sin when you do fall short of the glory of God. Because godly sorrow brings forth repentance. It's good to have godly sorrow, not earthly sorrow, because earthly sorrow is not going to produce anything. It's not going to be genuine repentance. It's going to be fake repentance. You need to have godly sorrow for your sins when you get born again. And even when you do fall short, after being, being born again, you need to be genuinely sincere and work with the Holy Spirit to bring about that change. Allow the Holy Spirit to do everything he wants to do to bring out God's plans and purposes. When you fall into sin, it will be something that will derail you from sticking on God's plans and purposes for your life. And I'm not saying that, you know, Jesus can't redeem you when you really do fall short. I'm not saying that. But realize this, that the enemy is going to throw every temptation at you to get you off course. He is going to throw every temptation at you. And, you know, there are many pulpits out there today that do not teach the word of God. They do not teach about sin. They they might mention it one time. They may not mention it at all. They just want you to feel good about yourself, but never really deal with the core of the problem, the true reason why mankind needs a Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is sin, and sin brings about shame. And you need to realize this, when you are in Jesus Christ, he bore your shame on that cross. He bore your shame and guilt on that cross. Go with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 2 through 3, where it says, Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, right hand of the Father. He is sitting, and we read in the scriptures in the New Testament that Paul tells us that in Christ we are seated with him in heavenly places. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Realize this, that Jesus Christ, paid the price for our sins. He paid the price for our shame. He bore our shame. So, you know, when you ask for your sins to be forgiven through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, realize you are forgiven, and the scripture tells us he remembers those sins no more. 
The slate has been wiped clean through the precious blood of Christ, and it's only through him. You can't go to some priest in some, you know, little enclosed area and get your sins forgiven. That is unscriptural in the highest of terms. That is not the gospel. It's another gospel, and it does not say. You have to enter through the blood of Christ. You have to look to Jesus, not to the Pope, not to the Muslim faith or Buddhism or some New Age practice. Only through Jesus Christ, only through the precious blood that was applied 2,000 years ago. You enter that by faith. We are saved through faith in the total work of Jesus Christ in his blood. His sanctifying blood is what saves us. So, you know, when you were born again, there is no reason to have shame over your past. Because when you walk in shame, the enemy is going to use that to derail you. Look what happened in the garden that we just read in Genesis chapter 3. When sin entered through a temptation, they had shame and they hid themselves from God. When you have shame, that is going to hinder you from walking in the greatest depths of fellowship with God. If you have shame in your life and you've been born again, you need to realize what the Word of God says, what your identity in Jesus Christ is, and walk in that identity. Realize that your sins are forgiven. He remembers them no more. They've been washed under the blood. And there's only a need for one sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus. There doesn't need to be another sacrifice. Jesus paid it all. And you know, there's many people who carry this weight of sin and shame and everything. And sadly in life, they do not choose Jesus, and there is eternal punishment for that. Scripture is very clear on that. Do not believe false prophets. There is eternal punishment. No questions asked. Very clear in Revelations what happens to those that are not in Christ, those who have not professed faith in Jesus Christ. When you are born again, and you know, this is where many churches are not doing what they are called to be doing, we're not fulfilling the Great Commission. You know, many churches, they just tell people to pray a prayer, and if that's all there is to it, they don't hear much preaching about sin about why we need a savior they just hear how to pray a prayer to get into heaven the sermons they hear are 10 steps to your best life now that's not what people need to be hearing people need to be hearing about jesus and what he has done and who the believer is in jesus christ and yes there is a time and there is a place for teaching people godly principles for being leaders and business principles and character development principles from the word of God. But when churches put the gospel aside for a counterfeit gospel of accommodation, it is a tragedy and it is a tragedy that has plagued this country. It is a tragedy that has plagued this country here and other places. We are living in a day and age where it's been acceptable for there to be scandal taking place in churches. We'll still sing songs from bands that are worship bands, if you will, that are linking up with the world, that are going the way of the world. And I'm not saying that everybody serving God is perfect. I'm far from perfect. But when we have people in positions of leadership that are aligning themselves with the world, just going along with the way of the world, we have a problem. We have a problem. We need to be preaching this gospel as it is written, not trying to water it down to attract People, we need to be preaching it black and white. There is no gray areas in the Word of God. And you know, most false doctrine, it's you know, not just about black and white. It's usually about a very slight off-white. That is how the devil works to deceive 
people into an eternity of hell. There's many Christians out there who are in bondage to shame because they have not been properly discipled in the churches. They have not been taught how to realize their identity in Christ. David Wilkerson gave a great word years ago, a great man of God. I have high respect for him. And yet, you know, he was not perfect. No one is. But he gave a great message. I encourage you to look it up. The gospel of accommodation. That's what we have here today in America. That's what we have here today in America. And it's a gospel where you can pray a prayer and live your life how you want. And they preach you'll make heaven no matter what. That's not how you present the gospel to people. If you're presenting people another gospel and they believe in that gospel that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is not going to save them. It will not save them. And there are many people who have bought into this false gospel of accommodation, this seeker-friendly gospel. And they think when they die, they're going to go right into heaven, and they're not, because they have been deceived, and it is tragic. That's why we need to be praying for a true revival in America, that God would raise up people to proclaim the true gospel of Jesus Christ, not something that's watered down that will appeal to people. That will be seeker-friendly, that will be culturally acceptable. Because we know that this word of God will go against the cultural current. You know, if you stick up for the word of God on the definition of marriage, there are many people who will scold you for it, will even disown you for it. We have to stand for this truth here. We have to stand for this truth and realize whose we are and realize we have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When shame enters into your mind from the sins of your past that are already covered under the blood of Jesus, realize that that is a tactic of the devil to derail you. You need to fix your eyes on Jesus. Whatever it is you are going through, fix your eyes on Jesus because he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. He is the alpha and he is the omega. He is the beginning and the end. All things were created through him. If the church would just realize that, if the church would just realize that, we really need to be examining ourselves as believers. Have we aligned ourselves with the word of God or we have we aligned ourselves with what is okay with cultural Christianity, with mainstream Christianity? I'm not saying everything that is popular in Christianity is bad. There are some good things there, but there are some things that are not in line of scripture. There are some things that are dumbing down the truth. And when the truth is dumbed down, people are not walking in the total freedom that Jesus Christ has provided. It's just the facts. Now I'm going to close in prayer. I hope this message has encouraged you. I know this was a short one, but I believe it's important. I believe it's important for us to realize that Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins and because he paid the price for our sins and that they are remembered no more. We can walk free of shame. And it doesn't mean you go and live as you please. Jesus says to bear fruits of repentance. You know, when you repent of your sins, you should have, when you get born again, you should have a desire to walk as we are instructed to walk according to God's word. That's the fruits of genuine faith in Jesus Christ. It's what we need to be walking in. It's not, you know, just going to church once or twice a week and living like the rest of the world, going along with the rest of the world. I understand why, you know, so many Christians are okay with this uh, Barbie movie that has come out. Where it has ties to the occult, based off the people who have made this movie.
there is an agenda out there for children. And it's being placated by Hollywood. And you know, I'm not a parent, I don't have a place to talk, but parents, you need to be guarding what your children are watching. Because there is a plan out there to destroy them. It's just through little tactics, little tactics of the enemy. Just enough to expose them to things, very subtly, that are anti-God. Before you know it, they're on a very destructive path. Parents need to be involved in guarding their children and what they're reading, what they're looking on the internet, what they're watching on television or on, you know, whatever streaming service it is you have. And thank God that there are more Christian-based streaming services out there that are much better than what's on Netflix. We need to guard ourselves, not just, you know, if you're a parent of children, but we need to guard ourselves. We need to look at what the sources of the things we are allowing into us. Because we don't want unclean things to germinate us. So when you do that, then that will lead you to fall into temptation. It leads you back into shame, and you do not want to walk in. You want to be walking in all that God has for you. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to get into your word. Lord, I pray, Lord, for everybody watching. Will reveal to them who they are in Jesus Christ. Reveal to them all that Jesus has provided through his sacrifice 2,000 years ago. All that was settled through that sacrifice. The total provision of our sins. The shame is put away, Lord. Lord, help us to walk free of shame, Lord. And help us to walk in the victory that Jesus Christ had through his blood, through his sacrifice, through his resurrection has provided for us. Help us to walk in our bridal identity as the bride of Christ, Lord Jesus. Help us to not give into the schemes and temptations and tactics of the devil, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord, to walk a victorious Christian life, Lord, to point all the glory to you, Lord Jesus. In your most holy and precious name we pray this. Amen. Okay, and if you would like to learn more about me and check out my other teachings as well as blog posts, you can go to my website, steadfast-etm.com. I post on there regularly, and you can also subscribe to a newsletter. There is a page there to look at missionaries. I would encourage you to donate to as well, as well as other links to other teachers of the Word of God that I personally follow myself and i encourage you to follow as well and there's some other resources on there for christian living and studying the word of god Additionally, i have a devotional available on the fruits of the spirit the print version is currently seven dollars and the ebook version is two dollars i highly encourage you to check that out it is a very um fundamental teaching and it's very easily laid out for you to understand and apply to your life also, I would like to encourage you to pray for CMI Global. I'm a part of that ministry fellowship there. I'm credentialed through them, and CMI Global is a ministry fellowship that helps equip and establish and strengthen the local church. So please join me in praying for leadership as well as provision and blessing for all the other ministers and churches within CMI Global and the website uh, cmiglobal.info is available for more information or if you would like to donate to them. I'd also like to talk to you about the School of Discipleship through endurehardship.org slash SOD which is where you can check it out. I attended this program, and I'll be a graduate of this two-year program as of May, at the end of May 2023. If you are looking for sound Christian teaching and discipleship, I highly encourage you to check this program. You can do it from anywhere. They do weekly Zoom meetings for you. If you enroll in the teachings are awesome. Um, they will help strengthen your walk with the Lord and help you build a lifestyle of discipleship, which is very important. This is for anybody, whether or not you want to be in ministry or not. I believe this is crucial for any Christian. There is just so much given in this school here. It has touched my life, and I know it has touched others, and it's 
uh, led by Dr. J.P. Price. You can find out more about this school here. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's very affordable, very reasonable. Again, I would highly encourage you to check this out. I'm sure it will be a blessing for you as well and share it with others. You might know somebody that wants to go through discipleship or go through some training to be better prepared for ministry. This is the place to do it at and they def Dr. J.P. Price and the other instructors with this program do a very good job of pouring into all the students I know has helped me and I trust it will also help others and be a blessing to others and God is definitely using this program here.